Hey everybody, it's Evan at VR.org. Welcome to my first impressions of the HTC Vive. So before we get started, the minimum requirements to run the Vive and VR in general, you're going to need a good computer with at least a GTX 1060 or a Radeon RX 480 or higher. You're also going to need an i5 4590 CPU or higher and at least 4 gigs of RAM or more. USB 3.0 ports are going to be important as well and you're going to need at least Windows 7 a Service Pack 1 or later. Also a big tip, if you're watching this while setting up your Vive, find your controller components which is going to be two Vive controllers, two micro USB cables and two power adapters. Those power adapters and micro USB cable will connect and then you connect those two micro USB cables to your Vive controllers. Pause this video now and connect those together and plug in your controllers. Why? Because they need to charge in order to actually play. So you can thank me later because the Vive tutorial and setup process does take a little bit of time. So hardware wise, I have the Vive headset plugged into the back of my computer. As for cables and connections, currently the Vive needs one HDMI input and one USB input to your computer plus a power source. Now there's an HTC box that connects between your Vive HMD. One side has orange inputs for your Vive and the other doesn't. Just remember to connect the orange coated cables with the orange coated inputs. Now the only reason I'm saying this is because I may or may not have plugged the orange sided cables to the non orange side of the HTC box. I might have been too excited and just wasn't really thinking. And basically I went super noob for about 10 minutes wondering why uh, my Vive wasn't working. So now the first thing we need to do is download the Vive setup software located at vive.com front slash setup. Once you're there, click on download Vive setup to download the setup file. So for the Vive, it says it's going to take about 38 minutes from beginning to end. We'll see if that actually happens or not. I think it just depends. And also, uh, in terms of preparing for setup, make sure you move any furniture and other obstacles out of the way of your play area. Also make sure that there are power outlets close to where you mount your base stations. We'll go more into detail about the base stations in a minute here. Now for room scale VR, which is what we are going to be doing here, you will need a play area where you can move around freely. We're basically making our mini holodeck. So the minimum space requirements are 1.5 meters by 2 meters or 5 feet by 6.5 feet. And there should be no more than 15 feet between both base stations. So next step is finding your base station components. We're going to have two square base stations and two base station power adapters. There's an optional mounting kit if you need to mount it to a wall. And there's also an optional uh, sync cable. Again, you don't really need the sync cable unless uh, your base stations are having trouble connecting and syncing to each other. The base stations need an unobstructed view of your play area to help your devices track you in space. So each base station has a 120 degree field of view for accurate tracking. They should be mounted so that their entirely overlapping FOV covers your play area. Place the base stations in opposite corners facing the center of your play area. You're going to want to mount them 2 meters or 6 feet 5 inches above the floor or higher. You can always angle them downward as well if needed. Now it's time to power on the base stations by plugging the power adapter to the back of the base station. Once both base stations are powered on, find the letter on the front of each base station. Make sure one base station is set to B and the other is set to C. If you need to change a base station's channel, press the channel button on the back. Now before you continue, make sure that both base station's lights are green. It's going to be on the top. If so, you can move to the next step. Now it's time to find your headset components. So get your link box, you know the one with the orange coated input, your USB cable, HDMI cable and the power adapter for the link box. Most importantly get your headset as well. So give your Vive headset a good look. There will be a status light on the left side of the Vive when plugged in. It will start off red but it will eventually turn green once it's connected and set up properly. There's also an audio extension cable which you will need to find a good pair of headphones for or earbuds to plug into. Don't forget to remove the protective film from the lens if you haven't done so already. Of course, it's time to learn about the link box. The boring side with no color connects to your computer, and the cool side with orange coating connects to your Vive headset. Okay, so now it's time to connect the link box to your PC. Plug the power adapter into your link box and into a power outlet. Use the USB cable to connect the link box to a USB port on your computer, and use the HDMI cable to connect the link box to an HDMI port on your computer's graphics card. 
make sure that the link box and your monitor are connected to the dedicated graphics card on your computer. If you don't have an available HDMI port, you can use a mini display port to display port cable, which is not included, to connect your link box to your computer. Now it's time to connect the headset to the link box. Plug the orange end of the 3 in 1 cable into the orange side of your link box. You should see device drivers installing on Windows. Okay, so next is finding your controller components. Remember when I said at the beginning of this video to find your controller components? Hopefully you listened, because by now they are semi-charged at least, and will give you some more playtime. So my friends, this is where the fun begins. I'm going to be going room scale today just because we do have enough room for it. Again, if you don't have enough room, standing only still works, it's just not going to give you as much space. Room scale obviously is preferred, especially for the Vive, and also it's really dependent on the games that you're going to be playing. Okay guys, so the next step was just locating my monitor with my controllers, uh, pretty, pretty easy step. You just hold down the trigger and you're good to go. Next is locating the floor. This is where you set both controllers down in the middle of the area. Both sensors are going to essentially pick it up. But before we do this, let me actually turn on my camera so you guys can see. I'll throw this on the top left so you guys can kind of see what's happening from both sides here. Here we go. All right, hi guys. <laughs> okay, so gently setting the controllers on the floor. Both sensors are going to be picking that up. I'm just hitting the next button here. Now this is the funnest part of the entire thing, for me at least. We get to make our mini holodeck. Sure, you, you can call it a play area, you can call it whatever you want. This is literally a mini holodeck, and it's pretty amazing. Sorry, I, I get excited, kind of a big Star Trek nerd. Anyways, so clockwise or counterclockwise, it really doesn't matter as long as you get the free space in your room. Again, you don't want to go over furniture. You want to make sure that your edge of your play area or your holodeck is going to be safe and secure so you can actually move around freely. You want to be able to put your arms, extend them, move back and forth. And again, worst case scenario, if you get too close to the edge, it will pop up on your HMD display. You will see it. So we got it. All right. It looks like we made our play area and it was a success. Sometimes if the play area is too small, it will let you know and you're going to have to do it over. So we got lucky there. All right, friends. So we are officially inside of Vive Virtual Reality. It looks like you can see our mini holodeck is kind of showing us uh, the edges. This is basically my play area. This is where obviously I need to be. I can't really go outside of it, but uh, for the most part, it is enough space to move around. And again, get used to it. You want to get used to your play area and kind of know your space, just because it's going to be very important, especially for some games that do require a decent sized play area. I'm going to say this is pretty expensive uh, real estate here. Let's go out and take a look, actually. It doesn't look as cool watching this in 2D, guys. I swear to you, this is amazing. When you actually have the headset on, this is pretty cool. I love this. Wow, I could sit here all day and drink a cup of coffee or something like that. This is beautiful. If this is your first day and you have the vibe and you're, you're at this step right here, I highly recommend checking out this beginning tutorial. It's exciting and really kind of just shows you the basics, and I, I do believe it's super important to do so. Let's find it really quick. There we go. here. Welcome to Virtual Reality, or VR. I am the Virtual Reality Assistance and Education Corps. I shall be your guide for the next few minutes to show you how everything works. Let's get started. Have a look around you. The orange border in which you're standing is called the Play Area. The boundaries of your play area were defined during setup, and VR experiences will take place within them. With that out of the way, I'd like to introduce you to your chaperone bounds. Walk toward me, slowly, please, and stop. Good. The colored fence around you represents your chaperone bounds, 
They will appear whenever you or your controllers approach the edge of your physical space and will help you to avoid bumping into objects in the real world. L let's do it one more time. I'll just move over to the other side. Now, walk slowly toward me on this side. Great. I think you've got the hang of it. Lastly, step back toward the center of your play area, just until the chaperone bounds disappear. Perfect. Now, have a look at the controllers you're holding. Go ahead, move them around. Wave them in front of your face. They are accurately tracked to your movements. Let's go through each of the controller buttons. On the underside of the controller is a trigger button. Give that a squeeze. Oh my! Let's just turn that off for the moment. Next, find the grip buttons located on either side of the controller. Press one of them. Ah! Uh, the large circle on the controller is the trackpad. It should be beneath your thumb. Slide your thumb around the trackpad. Notice that it shows you where you are touching the pad. The trackpad is also a button. Press in on the trackpad now. Oh, I wonder where that was hiding. Different VR experiences can use the trackpad in a number of ways. For example, let's turn it into four buttons instead of one. There. Now, press any one of the trackpad buttons. Hmm. <laughs> uh, try another. Uh, one more, please. Well... Oh, this is turning into quite a party. Next, look at your controller and find the menu button. As you may be able to guess, many VR experiences will use this button to call up a menu. Press it now. Oh, some nice variety there. Why not try one? Good choice. Now, find and press the system button which will summon the Steam VR dashboard. Here it is, the Steam VR dashboard. Note that most VR experiences will pause while the dashboard is on screen. You can use the trigger to select items on the dashboard, and the dashboard can be closed by pressing the system button again. Well, I believe that's everything you need to know. Now, I need to practice for my next lecture, the unabridged history of accountancy filing methods. I just need to fetch my notes. Uh-oh. My batter is dead. Well, guys, thank you so much for watching. Highly appreciate your time. Hopefully some of this stuff helped you guys. I kind of hit a couple mini roadblocks, obviously with the orange coated connectors with the HTC box. That was my first uh, mistake. Everything after that was awesome, but it was pretty simple uh, for the most part. The instructions, once you downloaded the Vive software, was pretty easy step-by-step -step to get you going. I think it took me about 35 to 40 minutes total to get it set up with the hardware and the software running. We had a beautiful house on some planet somewhere in the galaxy. I bet the real estate is pretty expensive, wherever that is, but uh, it's, it's a pretty awesome experience. I do believe you can kind of change your environments as well. So you can kind of pick your own environments. I really haven't done that yet, so we're gonna probably take a look and see how that goes. But my goodness, so far, so good, guys. And that initial uh, tutorial experience with the robot is a really good intro 
with the Vive and really kind of getting used to your play area as well as your controllers, your movement, and the buttons on the Vive controllers. So pretty amazing nonetheless. I am enjoying myself. I have a lot more stuff I want to check out. I downloaded a bunch of different software. I want to jump in and start to play it and we'll definitely be getting to specific content down the road. But again, initial setup and first impressions of the HTC Vive. So far, very impressed. Really appreciate your time and thank you for watching this video. Again, I really hope it helped you guys. We have more information here at VR.org. Anything and everything related to virtual reality is on our site as well as our YouTube channel. So thanks again for watching. My name is Evan and I will see you guys soon.